Welcome back. It's a tough life on collector's lots, trying to keep up with each and every collector out there. So when we offered the overworked Robert Smith the chance to escape to somewhere exotic, he packed his bag and made his excuses. The unpredictable British weather kind of gets you down, so that's why I've decided to jet off for some South Pacific sunshine, some paradise Hawaiian style. Here, I had that two pollard in the back of my plane the other week. Oh, did you really? Um, next left, please. Uh, driver, I think you've gone the wrong way. Aloha and welcome to Islington. So, Josh, why E? You know, why? Um, I always used to have a big tiki mask in my room when I was a kid, and I think that started things off. And then my parents used to take me to a well known Polynesian drinking establishment in London every year on my birthday. And I think that led me down the palm tree clad path towards Polynesian pop. <laughs> <laughs> Now, what is tiki all about? Well, tiki is a kind of mutant crossover between the proper Polynesian religion, if you want, which is mainly sort of deity and ancestor worship. And then the Americans brought that back to America after the Second World War and kind of it became wrapped up in the whole cultural consumerism of the 50s and 60s and became tiki culture as we know it now. So what other things have you got that are typical tiki? Oof, I've got tiki toilet seats, I've got tiki toilet brush holders, tiki mugs, I mean that's the main thing. Mainly the big heyday of, of tiki was 50s through to 70s and people used to go to these tropical palaces in the middle of Detroit or Chicago or somewhere cold and horrible and all the drinks would be served in individual mugs that would more often than not be individual to that restaurant and then to that drink in that restaurant that's why they're so collectible nowadays as if you get that it's the oh that's the mai tai mug from the kahiki and other collectors will, would recognize that now the house has been decorated quite uh, extrovertly are, are all the rooms tiki design um the whole top floor is totally tiki based and uh, as you go down through the jungle on the staircase you come out in more it's more of a kitsch surrounding down there. I mean, very much associated with tiki and with its sort of 50s, 60s kitsch, fun pop design, you know, which where tiki came from. And your bedroom is very, very individual. Lots of bamboo. Tell us about that. Um, yeah, in fact, that's floor to ceiling bamboo. We actually knocked a couple of rooms together. We ordered the whole floor from the Philippines that got shipped over, so it's got a springy bamboo feel. Um, basically, you know, the whole room is bamboo clad, and if you're in there, you shouldn't really be able to tell you're in London at all, unless you look out the window. Now, you must have a favourite item out of your collection. What would that be? Um, my favourite item is a big tiki tattoo I've got on my back, and that's definitely the one that I went through the most pain to get, so I think that qualifies there. So tell us about the carving behind us. Um, that's an interesting one, actually. That comes from the Festival of Britain. In 1951, it was part of the South Seas Pavilion there. And my sister gave it to me for my 20th birthday because she found it in a skip in a builder's yard and dusted it down, tarted it up, and here it is. So is your dream to be in an Elvis flick? Mm, depends which flick, maybe Blue Hawaii. No, no, my dream is to, to fly and operate a big seaplane with which I can tour the, the islands of the South Pacific and trade goods and return for wooden tiki's. That would be my real dream. And of course, I have a whole bevy of beauties waiting on each island with a tiki cocktail in their hands. Let's hope Josh's dream comes true.